Challenging for a world title is the top of the MMA mountain for most fighters. It's bringing the ring to Mordor, going to Mackey's at the end of a road trip. There's a lot of promotions out there and there's been a lot of champions, but what's more impressive than ending those fights in record time? Yes, by absolutely annihilating your opponent so all that championship struggle is ended in an instant. Well, I'm Balian from MMA On Point and these are the 15 quickest title wins in MMA history. Number 15, Brandon Halsey, 35 seconds. We're going to put our trains into Bellator Station to kick off this list. Starting back in 2014, Scott Coker had just taken over the company. They'd just done their first ever pay-per-view. And on that card, Tito Ortiz fought the middleweight champion, the 51-7 Alexander Shlomenko, who came up to light heavyweight for the pay-per-view spectacle and got arm triangled in round one. That was the end of his 12-fight win streak, but he went back to 185 to defend his belt against the undefeated Brandon Halsey. He was 7-0. Five of those wins had come inside the Bellator cage. He managed to fight his way through their tournament early in the year, so he got a pop at the champion and just 35 Five seconds into the fight, he took his back, dragged him down, and then basically choked him unconscious. He's out, he's over. He made it look incredibly easy considering the champ hadn't lost in four years, but Alex got his own back three years later in Russia where he finished him even faster in just 25 seconds. That wasn't for a world title though. Number 14, Ryan Bader, 35 seconds. I think the only thing more surprising about Fedor Emelianenko coming back to fight in Bellator at the very end of his career was the fact he somehow also then managed to make it through the heavyweight Grand Prix tournament all the way to the final. Okay, so he did only have to knock out Frank Mir on a losing streak and then just flatten Chow Sonnen, who was barely a 205er, but it put him up against the reigning light heavyweight champion Ryan Bader, who'd won the title after coming over from the UFC, and it would have been pretty incredible to see Fedor win a world championship literally 20 years into his MMA career, but that didn't happen at all. Unfortunately, it wasn't even close, because just 35 seconds in, with basically the first punch Darth Bader landed, this happened. And watch for that run. Oh, it's going to be over. Big shot! Well, at least he went out on his shield, but I'm sure people wanted to see more from the Pride legend. Number 13, Ronda Rousey, 34 seconds. Five title defenses into the UFC Championship reign of Rowdy, most people thought she could walk on water, or at very least beat Floyd Mayweather in a fight. She'd done so much to win the fan base over that in going to Brazil to fight Betch Cohea, most of the crowd were cheering for the American to win, which is pretty insane when you consider how ruthless most Brazilian fans are. Anyway, just when you thought Ronda couldn't get any more impressive, she absolutely obliterated Betch, and not with her judo or submissions this time, she just kind of walked towards her, swinging until 34 seconds later, she made contact and put her unconscious. I mean, most people will tell you it gave her a lot of false confidence about her striking, and to be fair, she did look like that fighting invisible enemies meme, but she still KO'd her cold and in her home country as well. Number 12, Lewis Taylor, 33 seconds. Okay, so who the hell even is Lewis Taylor? You've probably never heard of him, but to be honest, the guy has got a pretty good record. Handguns started fighting in 2007, then made it to the World Series of Fighting on the back of a five-fight guillotine win streak, and four of those were in the first round, even tapped Phil Hall with that thing, but ultimately lost to David Branch when he fought for the middleweight title. Then when the World Series of Fighting became the PFL, Lewis stuck around, he got a spot in the 2018 tournament and made it all the way to the final where he was matched with Abu Supian Magomedov. You might know him as Abus, the guy who fought Sean Strickland in just his second ever UFC fight. Anyway, basically this one was over as soon as it started. Oh! Taylor then retired as the champ, a tournament winner, and a richer man, and having only lost one fight in the last six years. Not bad, dude. Not bad. Number 11, Vandalay Silva, 32 seconds. You might not have heard of the IVC, the International Valley Tudo Championships. It was a pretty big promotion back in the day, especially in Brazil, and it had a whole bunch of future MMA talent go for its doors. They had 30-minute rounds. It was bare knuckle. They let them kick each other on the ground. All the good stuff, really. And it's where Vandele Silva went back to after he lost to Vitor Belfort at UFC Brazil. Okay, so we're talking like 1999 here, people. And a 22-year-old Vandele Silva faced off against Eugene Jackson for the first ever cruiserweight title. The Wolf, Jackson, was a 9-2 Kung Fu black belt who had just won the Bass Rutan Invitational. But that didn't stop Vandele from absolutely mauling him in just 32 seconds. <laughs> And it was literally this fight that got him the name The Axe Murderer. You can, you can see why, eh? 
Number 10, Henry Cejudo, 32 seconds. Okay, based on the fight so far, you can tell it says a lot when a champion versus champion fight makes it into a top 10 list like this. I mean, it's supposed to be literally two of the best guys on the entire planet going head to head. If Volk Islam is everything to go by, these fights are supposed to be extremely close and a real battle of skill and will, but that's not what happened when these two fought. The gold medalist literally just pushed TJ over, landed one big punch, didn't let him recover, and basically stole his legacy. The Olympics, Demetrius, TJ, I believe on the pound for pound best fighter in the world. It only took him 32 seconds, and to be fair, that might have been attributed to Dillashaw's extreme weight cut to 125, but he really wanted to do it and took EPO to make it happen, so he's only got himself to blame, really. Number 9, Brandon Vera, 26 seconds. When the truth came onto the UFC scene in 2005, he looked like the complete package. He had just won the WEC Heavyweight Championship, and after three first round finishes in a row in the UFC, it kind of looked like we might have a future champion on our hands. But then he totally lost his stride and started winning and losing all over the place, a bit like a Travis Brown career arc. And after eight years in the UFC, Brandon's record in the promotion was eight and seven. But being Filipino himself, when one championship started up and offered him fights in the Philippines, it seemed like an opportunity too good to turn down. And after just one fight and one spectacular first round finish, he was put against Paul Cheng to fight for the promotion's first ever heavyweight title. And in just 26 seconds, <laughs> turned out Brandon could still kick very hard and he nearly knocked Paul's head into the front row. He became the inaugural champion and went on a four fight first round finishing streak. Number eight, Frank Shamrock, 22 seconds. The dark ages of MMA were well and truly upon us when the UFC went to New Orleans for the Battle in the Bayou in 1998, but there was a bright light amongst the darkness, a gift given to us in the form of Frank Shamrock, the new and first UFC light heavyweight champion. He was basically the complete package and was miles above most of the competition, but the UFC still managed to dig up the 4-0 Russian Igor Zinoviev. But Frank Shamrock was basically unbeatable at this point. Igor rushed him and Frank dropped him straight on his head and ended the fight in just 22 seconds. Not really a more dominant way to show that once again you're probably the best fighter on the planet. The Louisiana crowd had no idea what they were about to witness, but I doubt they thought it would be an instant movie like KO. Number 7, Alistair Overeem, 19 seconds. For a while, the demolition man, Alistair Uberim, was probably the scariest dude on the planet. It was like watching Yuri Boyka, just an indestructible force, running through people. But in the middle of one of his eight-fight finishing streaks, he did fight an actual movie star, Todd Duffy. Obviously, everyone knows Never Back Down 2 is one of the best films of all time. <laughs> And of course, Todd had also been in the UFC by this point, and after getting knocked out, went to Japan and to Dream. Dream wanted to make a heavyweight title, and they thought, oh, let's get two of the most badass dudes on the planet to square off for it. It's got to be a great fight, right? Well, yes, and also not really, because Alistair Overeem weathered the opening blitz and then did what he does best, knees to the body, and then a massive left hook to end the fight in just 19 seconds. Number six, Frank Shamrock, 16 seconds. Well, old Frankie boy isn't the only person with more than one entry on this list. And in fact, right before his 22 second finish of Zinoviev, when he won the title for the first time, he did it in even faster fashion. And you could probably say more impressively, as most of these quick finishes are knockouts, whereas against Kevin Jackson, Frank showed everyone that all that time in Japan grappling and competing for the King of Pancras title totally paid off. This was also Frank's UFC debut, and it was at UFC Japan as well. So easy peasy for Shamrock. And the fans were introduced to him in a big way when in just 16 seconds, he managed to armbar Kevin. Not a bad way to win your first UFC title, is it? A 16 second armbar? Yeah, that's pretty insane. And then he went on to finish Igor in just 22 seconds, four months later. Number five, Ronda Rousey, 16 seconds. Okay, yep, yeah, well, here's someone else who's on this list more than once. Obviously, these days, the argument against Ronda is women's MMA and the bantamweight division just wasn't very well developed, and it also just goes to show you how good judo is as a martial art against people who can't stop it. What do you think, maybe at UFC 1, if a world-class judo player with an unstoppable takedown and a sick armbar, they would have dominated just as easily as Gracie did? Well, there was actually Remco Pardell who did do that at UFC 2, but he did get lapel choked by Hoist as well, so never mind, I guess. Either way, that's what happened when Ronda defended the title against Alexis Davis, who was also actually, as it happens, a BJJ black belt. She just unfortunately didn't get to use it or, well, do anything at all, really. Good overhead right by Ronda. And a big throw down. That's and it. it's all over, just like that. It was Ronda's fastest UFC finish at the time and her most impressive performance. It started the whole Mike Tyson comparisons and, well, she did basically just annihilate her, didn't she? 
Number four, Chris Cyborg, 16 seconds. Oh yes, as dominant as Ronda was, you can't forget that there was another woman who was arguably even more scary and took an entire division hostage for the best part of 10 years. Chris Cyborg took out Gina Carano and then basically smashed everyone she faced in Strikeforce, then Invicta, the UFC, and now Bellator. But it was poor Hiroko Yamanaka that got it the worst. It was Cyborg's third title defense in Strikeforce. She'd only been a champion a year, and people were just getting around to the idea that she was definitely levels above the rest of the division. Hiroko was on a nine-fight win streak, was 12-1 as a pro, but it didn't seem to matter at all because Cyborg dropped her literally in about three seconds, and it was a 16-second championship title defense for Chris, where she basically made it look as easy as Tom Hardy destroying everyone in Warrior. And thing is, it was after this fight she tested positive for steroids, which overturned the win to a no contest, but it will still go down in the history books as one of the fastest title wins ever. Number three, Andre Arlovsky, 15 seconds. So in the mid-2000s, MMA was just on the come up, but the skill level arguably wasn't very high. That's why someone like Anderson Silva came along and started cleaning house. But if there weren't many technical guys in the normal weight classes, you can believe that heavyweight was even more sparse. So a guy like Andre Olovsky thrived on this, not only because he was big, strong and athletic, but he also had submission skills and a laser beam right hand, which was fast and powerful enough to beat 90% of the heavyweights out there, to be honest. He won the UFC heavyweight interim title and was eventually promoted to undisputed champion and in his first title defense he put on a record breaking performance by getting the fastest finish in championship history at the time. The opponent was Paul Buenatello, an axe kicking king of the cage heavyweight champion but when he squared off against the pitbull he basically didn't get to do anything. What happened? What happened? Wow! It's over That's already! It. It was so quick Joe Rogan didn't even really know what happened and Arlovsky ran around the ring like a young Hercules. Number two, Ronda Rousey, 14 seconds. Okay, so yeah, Ronda is on this list three times, which is pretty impressive in the entire history of the sport. She's got three of the fastest championship finishes, but it's not that surprising, I guess, because that was the story of her whole career before even the UFC. I mean, one of her coaches, the legendary judo Jean LaBelle, used to carry around a stopwatch. But I'm sure most of you have seen this finish before. Her fastest win came against Kat Zingano, who everyone thought was actually going to be a toughest challenge she'd ever had. You know, Alpha had a ton of skills, as well as being physically a very intimidating woman. But Kat kind of lost the plot, charged straight straight at her and it was all kind of too easy for Ronda to take her down and lock up a rather strange armbar which no doubt made a tap as quickly as possible in just 14 seconds. It honestly looked like a sequence from the Fast and Furious and it is the fastest submission in title history. Number one, Conor McGregor, 13 seconds. All right, well, you may have thought this was number one from when you clicked on this video, but I at least hope you now know about a bunch of other awesome quick title finishes and you learned something. But yeah, Mac is number one and he could not have done it more impressively. Aldo was undefeated in literally like 10 years, had dominated the division in the WEC and the UFC and went on to have a great career resurgence after this. Can't take anything away from McGregor in this one. It was the culmination of his two-year UFC takeover campaign. He said it would be over in the first exchange and it totally was and it blew the MMA world's mind. He faded back and dropped his signature left hand on him and his story was written in the MMA history books. I dreamt this so much, so clearly, so precisely and so frequently and that's what we uh, that's what I am feeling right now it's it's a dream come true he was even seen practicing this sequence backstage and kind of knew exactly how he was going to win the world title so there you go after looking through 25 years of MMA 10 of the biggest promotions that ever existed and every title finish ever Conor McGregor takes the number one spot and he'll probably never let you forget it either Shout out to Maximus Decimus Randalmus for editing this video. Thank you, Max. Big appreciation to you guys. Here's his social media. Go check him out. Follow him. As always, thank you to our channel champions. Okay, you know who you are. There you go on the screen. They are members down below. If you want to join them, click join. You get access to some bonus cool stuff, some goodies, badges, emotes, but also the podcast episodes and the other bits and bobs. So yeah, join them if you want. Become part of the MMA On Point family. All right, guys, appreciate you very much. Thank you. I will see you in the next one. Looking forward to it. Take it easy.